The moon has always decorated our sky and is the nearest celestial body. So naturally, humans have long thought of going out there and trying to see if staying there is possible or not. This dream was fulfilled by the Apollo 11 mission led by NASA on July 24, 1969. It was, as Neil Armstrong, the first to set foot on the moon said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But now, after more than 50 years of that achievement, humans are again excited about rushing back to the lunar surface. But why? The reason for that is more than just scientific exploration. It is more about acquiring the treasures hidden on the moon. This discovery is a major milestone and could change the future of space exploration for humankind. Want to know how the moon can help in all this? Stay tuned to the end to find out. Let's start with the 60s. During the ongoing Cold War between the West and the former USSR, this rivalry didn't go into direct battlefields, but carried out missions to bring the opponent down in many ways. The two sides competed in developing intercontinental ballistic missiles as part of their nuclear deterrent strategies. The successful launch of the Soviet Union's Sputnik 1 in 1957 marked the beginning of the space age emphasizing the Soviets' early lead in space exploration. This event prompted the United States to accelerate its own space program, leading to the establishment of NASA in 1958 and the subsequent Mercury and Gemini programs. The moon served as just the right place to target a successful landing to establish an upper hand in geopolitical influence. U.S. President John F. Kennedy, recognizing the symbolic and strategic importance of lunar exploration, articulated a focused vision on the idea of landing a man on the moon. It finally happened in 1969, thanks to the Apollo 11 mission. This way, the U.S. was able to become the first country to set foot on the lunar surface successfully. After that, several Apollo missions followed and they all reinforced the United States' commitment to space exploration, with a total of 12 astronauts landing on the moon. Humans have developed unbelievable technologies in the past 50 years. So why haven't we tried to go back to the moon until now? What happened to that heightened excitement of exploring the moon during the Apollo mission era? Did it die, or were the priorities shifted? The answer is both. You see, the last manned mission to the moon was in 1972 with the Apollo 17, and the main reason for the end of the lunar exploration was money. Once the United States achieved victory in the space race by reaching the moon, political backing for space exploration ended. This resulted in a significant decline in NASA funding from the U.S. budget. At the height of the Apollo missions, NASA received almost 5% of the U.S. federal budget, but today, it receives only 0.4%. Moon missions are expensive feats, and these budget cuts hit NASA hard. So the exploration basically ended until we found out that the moon isn't just an empty celestial body, but holds some substances that we hadn't discovered yet. Substances that aren't less than treasures. This is what has sparked the moon rush. Before we tell you more about these substances, we would love it if you appreciated the channel by clicking on the like button and subscribe to the channel so the algorithm lets more curious people like you see our videos. Thank you. Now let's continue. India's space agency, ISRO, has made significant contributions to lunar exploration with its Chandrayaan missions. And recently, in August 2023, their Chandrayaan-3 probe landed on the never-touched-before south pole of the moon. This came right after the tragic news that Russia's Luna 25 spacecraft spun out of control and crashed into the moon. Earlier, in 2008, Chandrayaan-1 had released a moon impact probe, which is designed to separate from a lunar orbiter and gather data on the surface. This confirmed the presence of something vital for life. Water. But it was mainly NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and its Moon Mineralogy Mapper M3 instrument that played a key role in identifying water molecules on the lunar surface. This was a huge discovery and probed several questions and opportunities for mankind for its lunar curiosity. Which form is the water on the Moon in? Is it as ice or hydrated minerals? Does it mean there could be some form of life there? 
and can that water sustain future human missions, providing drinking water and perhaps rocket fuel? Water is more than just a survival need. Through a process called electrolysis, water molecules can be split into hydrogen and oxygen, and when needed, these elements in liquid form can be recombined in a controlled burn and used as rocket fuel, propelling the rocket forward. NASA is even using this technology in its Space Launch System, or SLS, rocket. The presence of water on the Moon holds significant implications for future space missions. If the water could be utilized, it could sustain humans for more days without needing to send it along from Earth with the mission. This longer stay is important because now we are looking to send manned missions to Mars, and it's a nine-month journey only one way. So, we need to have extensive research on surviving in space for a long time. And what better place to do this than the Moon? Secondly, the Moon can become a refueling station or a pit stop for other space missions that are headed to explore or study planets further away from us. But there is another reason why humans have a newfound interest in Moon missions. Unlike the common helium found on Earth, helium-3 is a rare isotope and is thought to be more abundant on the Moon's surface. What's so important about that? Well, the significance lies in its potential as a fuel for nuclear fusion a clean and highly efficient energy source. Helium-3 fusion releases substantial energy without generating harmful byproducts, offering a promising solution to Earth's energy needs. To put that into perspective, according to the Lunar and Planetary Institute, about 5,500 tons of helium-3 could power 100 helium-3 fusion power plants, all with a 50-year supply of 1,000 megawatts of electricity this much energy could easily solve the energy crisis. While the extraction, transport, and utilization of helium-3 on the Moon is still futuristic, it is also a bright opportunity for nations to become the first to tap into this untouched extraterrestrial resource. Back in 1986, scientists at the University of Wisconsin found that the lunar soil, called regolith, has an estimated 1 million tons of helium-3, and it was transported to the Moon by solar winds over the course of billions of years. These particles have accumulated on the Moon's surface due to the lack of an atmosphere. Some estimates suggest that the energy produced by the helium-3 would be 250 times greater than that needed to extract and transport it to Earth. As of right now, other than the USA, China, Russia, South Korea, and India are planning to send missions to the Moon in the next year. But this doesn't mean that any country that manages to reach the Moon resources can flag it and claim it as its own. As of now, there is no international agreement that allows any country to claim sovereignty over any part of the Moon or its resources. The Outer Space Treaty, established by the United Nations in 1967, explicitly states that no one country can lay exclusive ownership of territory claims to celestial bodies, including the Moon. Over a hundred countries are party to the legally binding treaty. But honestly, how many times can you count humans not adhering to such treaties on Earth? Too many, right? So, let's say if China decides to head out there and claim some part of the Moon. It could claim the resources there and initiate a battle back on Earth. In 2015, President Obama signed a law that said that we interpret Article 2 of the treaty, which says you can't claim territory in space, but you can extract and own resources found there, which technically doesn't violate the treaty. So you see, there are loopholes that could be used to exploit the treaty and use it to one's benefit. The water and helium-3 presence on the Moon is definitely something of great importance to the economic and space exploration endeavors of many countries. Let's hope it never becomes a bone of contention for conflict for humanity. That's it for today. If you learned something new, please consider subscribing to our channel for more amazing videos. If you're interested in science and technology, watch this video shown on the screen right now. Thanks for watching. See you there.